You want to know one of the best things about being an atheist? I get to be wrong. I'm serious. There's nothing I believe or know that I can't change my mind about given new evidence. I am an ontological floozy, my friends, and I am proud of it. If tomorrow NASA announces that the moon is made out of cheese, you and me, we get to line up with our fondue forks first. I mean, if you're like me, maybe a Facebook, a few of your smarter friends first to make sure you're not just misreading the headlines, but then it's all good, baby. I hope it's cheddar. And that's great because I don't know about you, but I'm wrong a lot. I mean, sure, sometimes I've been wrong about fun stuff like how to pronounce chimera, but I've also been wrong about a bunch of not fun stuff too. At various times in my life, I have held deeply racist, homophobic, transphobic, and just plain stupid opinions. And yes, I am incredibly lucky. I had patient friends and family and teachers that changed my mind at those times. But I also had an ideological framework that could change. And religious people don't have that privilege because at the foundation of all religious belief is an infinite, universal, and unchangeable truth. Otherwise, it's not religion. And a religious person, no matter how woke, intelligent, or intellectually curious, by definition of being religious, has to run everything they know through the filter of that unchanging truth. They have to run every new true thing they learn by a pastor or a holy book, or at the very least a worldview, and they have to say to themselves, is this one of those true things I'm allowed to believe? Or is this one of the ones that I have to ignore? And the thing is, Joel Osteen, he never gets to change his mind. Not about gay marriage, neither does Ray Comfort or Franklin Graham. They have denied themselves one of the best parts of being human, which is changing your mind and growing because of it. Look, I'm not claiming to know the meaning of life or even that there is one, but if there is, that's pretty fucking close. And, and look, don't get me wrong. I don't want you to think that I'm saying all religious people are bigots, but none of them aren't bigots because of their religion. We've made our way through pretty much all the major holy books on this show, and I have yet to find one that would leave anybody less bigoted. And yeah, modern religious people can find bits of nice poetry here and there and apply messages of tolerance to them, but only by ignoring the other parts in the same book that in no uncertain terms clarifies that you got to kill a gay guy and witches with rocks. And this isn't an accident, right? Religion was made up exactly for this reason, so that people don't have to change their mind. You know, why hasn't Steven Anderson changed his mind about trans people in spite of overwhelming scientific evidence? Because the 2,000-year-old book he's based his morality around hasn't changed, and it never will. I mean, look, religion doesn't keep a lot of promises, but that is the promise it keeps. We will sell you a worldview and you will never, ever have to change it. Because changing your mind about shit that matters, it's fucking hard. It's embarrassing and it's uncomfortable and nobody likes doing it. But we have to. If we're going to move forward as a species, we have to be willing to admit when we're wrong and we have to change as a result. The truth has to matter, even if it means looking in the mirror and seeing some stuff we're not proud of. Now, me, I get the privilege of doing that publicly. My pronunciation of nuclear is burned into the digital record. But the stuff you're wrong about is probably not. You get to correct your mistakes a lot less publicly, and you get to correct them now. You don't need anybody's permission but your own. So let me ask you, what are you wrong about? And what are you going to do about it?